What is up guys, my name is Chase and welcome back to my gaming update, this time for summer 2023. This is the second time I'm making one of these videos where I share the games that I've picked up, the games that I'm currently playing, and the games that I'm most looking forward to. I'm not gonna lie, I think the theme of this summer is buying games that I still have yet to even start playing. <laughs> I just found a lot of really great deals for games that I've been looking for for a while, so how about let's just jump into my summer video game pickup. So first off, on June 22nd, I went to GameStop. I had my $5 reward coupon, so I ended up getting $5 off Persona 5 Royal for the PlayStation 4. I've mentioned before on this channel that I think the Persona series is very interesting. If anything, I just really like the art style, at least that I've seen, of Persona 5. I hear that this is like a 100 plus hour game, so I'm not too sure when I'm actually gonna get around to playing it. Our friend Lizbang is currently streaming this game on Twitch, so I've been kind of like watching her to see what kind of game this is. So I'm very interested to finally try out a Persona game with Persona 5 Royal. Then on July 2nd, I went back to GameStop. Yeah, you can often find me inside of a GameStop. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit that I did end up picking up Everybody 1-2 Switch. This is a sequel to the launch game on Nintendo Switch called 1-2 Switch. It's the sequel that we've all been dying for. I think this is like one of the most anticipated games for the Switch. No, in all seriousness, I don't know. I thought it would be like funny to have this game in my collection. I kind of feel like this is gonna end up being like an underground Switch game in the future because it's not like they even really marketed this game. They put out like one trailer and that was it. But it's basically another 1-2 Switch where now instead of just using the Joy-Con from the Nintendo Switch, you can actually use your phone as a controller for some of the mini games. And since you can just use your smartphone, I have seen some people playing this game on Twitch and you know playing with their viewers. So yeah, I honestly just bought this game as a joke. But who knows, maybe this will be the next game that I bust out at a party. <laughs> then on July 6th, I just so happened to be at the shopping mall, and I ended up going to this store called Book Off. I've mentioned this store in my video about what it's like being a gamer in Hawaii, but basically it's a used bookstore that also sells a bunch of video games, and a lot of times you'll find like more lesser known video games at Book Off. So I ended up with a haul from Book Off here. First up, we have Clubhouse Games for the Nintendo DS. This is the original Clubhouse Games, and they later went on to make Clubhouse games 51 worldwide classics on the Nintendo Switch. I don't know, I thought it would be interesting just to like see where Clubhouse games started because I do really enjoy Clubhouse games on the Nintendo Switch. So of course we have to find out the lore and all the story with Clubhouse games. We got to see where the series got started. I also picked up The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. I'm not gonna lie, I have never played Majora's Mask and I'm honestly terrified to ever play Majora's Mask because I absolutely cannot stand time limits in video games. And I know that in Majora's Mask you can like turn back time and whatnot, but even just having that time limit and like, you know, the giant moon, it just gives me so much anxiety and I hate that feeling when I'm just trying to play a gosh darn video game. But I do hear that Majora's Mask 3D is like the definitive way to play this game, so maybe I'll have to give it a try. I don't know if I'll actually like it though. <laughs> I also got Big Brain Academy Wii Degree for the Nintendo Wii. I don't know, I just kind of like the Big Brain Academy games. I used to play it a lot on my DS, like I feel like that was the classic one. And I hear that this Wii version is pretty good, it has some nice multiplayer games too. I also have the Big Brain Academy game for the Nintendo Switch, but now we also have the Wii version to check out. And finally, at Book Off, I picked up Star Fox Zero on the Nintendo Wii U. This is a Wii U game that I did not pick up when it was new. I have my whole 50 minute video talking about my experience with the Wii U, and by the time Star Fox Zero came out, I was honestly kind of falling out of love with my Wii U. This was when the Wii U games were really declining in my opinion. Games like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, and Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, and apparently Star Fox Zero is also one of the bad games for the Wii U. I figured I should at least have it in my Wii U collection, maybe I can try it out one day. Because I do believe that before you form an opinion about something, you should at least give it a try first. So maybe we can finally get a definitive answer from me if I think Star Fox Zero is any good. And what's really nice about going to book 
book off is that since these are used games, they have some decent prices. Like, I believe I picked up all four of these games for about $50. So I don't know, I feel like that's a win. I was in the store, like, referencing eBay to see if the prices were any good. So yeah, I feel like I at least tried to shop smartly when I picked up these games. But anyway, on July 9th, I made some online orders for video games. First off, I picked up Burnout Paradise Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. I wanted to pick up this game because, for one thing, I've never played this game, and I hear that the original Burnout Paradise is like a beloved game. From what I hear, this is a nice, like, turn off your brain driving type of game, which I think I do really need in my life. So I picked this up on eBay for a pretty good price, and then on GameStop's website, they were running a sale for Sonic Frontiers on the PlayStation 5. I'm actually interested to try out Sonic Frontiers. I've been hearing good and bad things about this game, so I at least want to try it out for myself. I made sure to get the PS5 version because I hear that the Nintendo Switch version has some really just not great graphics, but apparently this is supposed to be like a Breath of the Wild style Sonic game, so at the very least I'm interested to check it out. I was honestly never the biggest Sonic fan, but maybe this game will turn me into one, I don't know. <laughs> Then on July 10th, of course, I went back to GameStop. And they actually had two Wii U games that I've always been interested in. First off, we have Minecraft Wii U Edition. This version of Minecraft always just seemed interesting to me because they never ended up making use of the Wii U gamepad screen. I always thought it would be so cool if they put the inventory screen on the gamepad, kind of like what they ended up doing with the 3DS version of Minecraft. But on the Wii U, I don't think they even make use of the gamepad at all. But I just think it's so interesting to even even see Minecraft running on a Wii U. And then I also picked up the NES Remix pack. This comes with NES Remix 1 and 2 on the Wii U. I think the NES Remix games are so interesting. They basically take a bunch of the classic NES games and throw a bunch of like challenges or they mix up the gameplay in some different ways. And I believe for the longest time they were just digital download only on the Wii U, but they eventually released this physical version. I always wanted it. So I'm very excited to finally have NES Remix 1 and 2 on a physical disc. Fast forwarding a bit to July 21st, I of course had to pick up Pikmin 4 on the Nintendo Switch. I actually had a very fun time playing Pikmin 4 even if it was my first time playing through a Pikmin game. Ochi is incredibly lovable, the graphics are just beautiful in this game, and overall it combines exploration with combat and strategy, so it's a very different and just interesting type of game. I have a whole video talking about some of the things you can do in Pikmin 4, so definitely check that video out if you're interested in this game. But yeah, I'm very like happy to recommend this game to anybody who's even a little bit interested in the Pikmin games. And finally, on August 10th, 2023, I picked up Disney Illusion Island for the Nintendo Switch. I used my $5 monthly coupon from GameStop to get this game. I think it just looks very cute. From the reviews that I've read online, it's like not what I would have expected. It's basically baby's first Metroidvania type of game, which I will say is a genre that I am very much not familiar with. So I think this will be nice to me just to like introduce me to Metroidvania type of games. I also just love the art style. I honestly kind of love how much Disney is just embracing Mickey Mouse's toon style art. So I'm excited to hop into this game. It seems just very cute, very just happy and fun. <laughs> but those are all of my video game pickups for summer 2023. Those are a lot of games that I honestly don't know if I'll ever have time to even get around to playing. <laughs> but now, how about let's talk about the games that I've been playing this summer. First off, in June, I finally finished up my journey through The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. No spoilers here, but man, that game was such an experience. I absolutely loved my time playing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It basically took everything that you love with Breath of the Wild and just excelled it. The story was really interesting. The final moments of the game were just very epic, very exciting. I have a few videos talking about Tears of the Kingdom if you want to go check them out. But yeah, definitely like one of my top games for this year, I think. Then of course, I also played through Pikmin 4 and finished it. Once again, no spoilers for Pikmin 4. But yeah, as I talked about earlier, I love how this game combines a bunch of different gameplay elements, and there is surprisingly quite a bit of depth to this game, kind of literally. <laughs> Just overall, 
I'm really happy that Pikmin 4, I think, is perfectly fine to jump into even if it is your first Pikmin game. Very like new player friendly and overall just a really fun experience. I had a really fun time with Pikmin 4. And finally, kind of a curveball here, it took me two years but I finished Sackboy A Big Adventure for the PlayStation 5. It's funny because this was like one of the games that I was most looking forward to on the PlayStation 5. However, if I'm being honest, like it didn't really grab me as much. I felt like a lot of the gameplay, a lot of the levels weren't like super memorable to me. So I just kind of left that game on the side. It took me a really long time to finally get back to it. It does pretty heavily rely on you having to get a certain number of collectibles to unlock the next part of the map. And that's honestly not my favorite thing ever. It means that I would have to do a bunch of backtracking and go through levels that I already played through. But I mean, overall, looking back at it now, I think for the most part, it was generally fun, very cute, and just really great looking graphics. I guess it's basically the best alternative to something like Super Mario 3D World that you can find on the PlayStation. But that wraps up the games that I've been playing for summer 2023. Finally, let's take a look into the future and talk about some of the games that I am most looking forward to. First off, we have Fae Farm coming to the Nintendo Switch on September 8th, 2023. This was a game that was revealed during the infamous Farm Simulator Nintendo Direct. But this farm sim was honestly one that stuck out to me the most from that Direct. The graphics look really cute. Based on the gameplay that we've seen so far, it looks like there's a lot of different types of gameplay. Like I believe there's even like an underground mining type of aspect to it. So that game seems really interesting. I have my pre-order for it. I'm gonna go pick it up in September. Also in September, we have the physical version of Pikmin 1 and 2 for the Nintendo Switch. As we all pretty much know by now, I am such a sucker for physical things. So I of course had to pre-order the physical version of Pikmin 1 and 2 Remastered on the Switch. It's really interesting because I feel like the digital version of those games launched such a long time ago, but I'll finally be able to get my physical copy of it. And it's actually really cool because now you can play all of the mainline Pikmin games on the Nintendo Switch. How about you bring Hey Pikmin to the Switch, Nintendo? <laughs> then on October 20th, we actually have two really high profile games, which I'm really surprised that they're both releasing on the same day. We have Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Nintendo Switch, which is the first brand new mainline 2D Mario game since, I guess, New Super Mario Bros. U on the Wii U over 10 years ago. But it looks like it's finally a change of pace for the 2D Mario games. It looks so weird and so different and so unique. I'm really excited to get my hands on Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And then we're also getting Marvel's Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 5. As much as I am excited about Spider-Man 2, like, I absolutely loved the original Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4, as well as Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5. I have to be honest and say that my hype levels aren't like out the roof for Spider-Man 2. It more or less looks like we're getting another Marvel Spider-Man game, this time with two characters, which is honestly not my favorite thing ever. I'm not a big fan of when video games force you to switch characters throughout the game. Sometimes that can feel really clunky, so I'm hoping that is not the case with Spider-Man 2. But I still do have my pre-order for it. I am looking forward to that coming out as well. I honestly don't know how I'm supposed to juggle both of those games, but we'll see. And finally, on November 17th, we are getting Super Mario RPG on the Nintendo Switch. Really crazy that we're getting a full-on remake of Super Mario RPG. Like, I honestly would have been happy if they just brought the game to Nintendo Switch Online. And I always wondered why they didn't bring it to Nintendo Switch Online. Like, it was available on the SNES Classic. But I guess now we know why they didn't, because they're just making a full-on remake of it. <laughs> I've honestly never played the original Super Mario RPG, so I'm looking forward to playing it for the very first time in this remake on the Nintendo Switch. But that finally wraps up my gaming update for summer 2023. I feel like it's been a pretty busy summer for gaming, which is always nice. Let me know in the comments what you guys have been up to in gaming during the summer. If you want to check out my last gaming update, feel free to check out the video below. For now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chase, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.